Hey everybody, I'm Maddie, and welcome to another episode of Tech Insights for Visionaries. It's nice to be back again. I'm Sean. On our show, we discuss the latest trends and innovations in technology and how these changes affect businesses around the world. This podcast is produced by a team of software engineers from MobyDev, an international software engineering company. MobyDev invests into technology research and has years of experience building AI-powered solutions, implementing machine learning, augmented reality, and IoT. If our experience writing software has taught me anything, it's that doing research into how technology is changing can be extremely useful when finding solutions to problems. Definitely, when entrepreneurs get a better idea of how technology is being used in their industry, they can better manage their money and investments. So today, we're talking about creating financial assistance apps powered by artificial intelligence. I think a good place to start is with the status of the personal finance market this year. I agree. According to verified market research, this year in 2022, the personal finance market is expected to reach 1,420.96 million by 2026. This could grow to 1.80 billion by 2030, according to NMSC. The economy has begun to recover since the worst of the pandemic effects. Although recovery will still take some time, personal finance management has become a focus for many households, and there is significant demand for tools to help people manage their finances, like personal financial assistance apps. I see. So what is a personal finance assistant app? Personal financial assistant is an application that helps users manage their money more intelligently. Such an app can perform a wide range of tasks, from monitoring expenses and income to advising on the most suitable investment options. Some apps can also manage subscriptions and get better rates for your bills. For example, Truebill automatically scans users' bills and looks for the best ways to save. Personal financial assistance can be both standalone applications or software connected to personal banking accounts. In the second case, the user will get more opportunities to control and manage their expenses and incomes, since the software will automatically pull up data such as transaction history. Interesting. Does the open banking standard have anything to do with this? The open banking standard, which is gaining popularity in the USA and Europe, allows the secure exchange of consumer data between banks and fintech applications, with the consent of the user. This scenario helps automate the flow of data and get more meaningful insights for better financial advice. As of March 2021, there were 502 registered open banking third-party providers, TPP, in Europe. Also, according to Statista in 2020, the number of open banking users in Europe was approximately 12.2 million, And this figure is expected to reach 63.8 million users by 2024. I see. What kinds of personal finance apps are out there in the market right now? Well, at the moment, there are three different kinds of apps. There are spending trackers, budgeting apps, and investment apps. Spending trackers are used to control spending habits. They're often linked to the user's personal banking account. A few examples are Mint, Wally, and Olivia. Budgeting apps are used for financial planning and achieving goals. They're also used to manage savings and plan future expenses. Some examples of these are GoodBudget, YNAB, and Spendry. Investment apps are used to provide financial advice and investment options that are available in the market. A couple of examples I can think of are Personal Capital and Acorns. Interesting. I'm guessing that some apps can combine these features together, right? Definitely. That can allow apps to provide a better use experience and offer comprehensive financial management services. What you want to do depends on your business goals, the needs of your potential users, and market trends. That's a good point. The scale of your business and your goals determine what the app should be able to do. So what can you tell me about the key features of financial assistance applications? Yes, it's best that we discuss these key features before we get into AI. Some of the features of a financial assistance application to consider are registration and login, user profiles, expense tracking, categorization and budgeting, setting financial goals, investment and savings, integration with banking accounts, analytics and reports, notifications and alerts. Consider which features you'll need and which ones can be left out when planning your personal finance application. Ah, I see. 
So how does AI play a role in personal finance applications? This is the line between ordinary financial management apps and powerful financial assistants. When designed correctly, AI assistants can become a full-fledged alternative to human financial consultants, providing an equal level of customer service. One of the most powerful applications of artificial intelligence in financial technology is the ability to use predictive and prescriptive analytics. Since financial management deals with ease to process data, personal finance assistant apps can detect user behavior patterns as well as make predictions on future users' income and expenses. This happens thanks to statistics and modeling techniques. Predictions are made based on historical data of account transactions, powered by machine learning algorithms. Predictive analytics will let users plan for the future and tell them how best to achieve their financial goals, acting like a real financial advisor. That's fascinating. This must be pretty complex though, right? Yes, it can be. Analytics modules are a quite complex solution that requires extensive industry and technology knowledge and a large amount of historical data. The less data you have, the less accurate the analytics will be. Moving on from analytics, another application of AI and personal finance assistance is biometric authentication. Financial data needs to be secured, and biometrics offer enhanced security, as well as convenience for users. According to IBM, 20% of data breaches are caused by compromised credentials. Biometric authentication technology is considered one of the most reliable ways to protect data. Modern algorithms can easily guess the correct password for an account, but they cannot fake the unique physical characteristics of users. Ah, I see. We've talked about biometrics on our show before. There's a lot of ways that it could be implemented, like facial recognition, iris scanning, fingerprints, or even voice. There are some limitations to each form of authentication. Some, like iris scanning, require special hardware. For enhanced security, combining forms of authentication together, like fingerprints and facial recognition, can be used. These techniques are called multimodal biometrics. That's a good idea. If we can move away from authentication for a moment, I wanted to ask if AI financial assistance apps could replace a human financial advisor. Probably not. But AI financial assistance apps are beginning to emulate human conversation. Instead of looking up information in the app, the user can ask something like, hey, what is my credit card balance? And get a voice response. Conversational AI makes it possible. Based on natural language processing, NLP, and natural language understanding, NLU, technology, the conversational engine enables smooth communication between a financial app and its users. That's awesome. How does it work? Okay, so AI voice assistants use a device's microphone to receive voice requests. First of all, they need to recognize a command, a wake word, that helps wake up the device, since virtual assistants are usually passively listening. Further, after triggering, voice recognition, voice analysis, and language processing go to work, and the magic happens. From here, automatic speech recognition, or ASR, converts the user's speech into a text transcription. This gets processed with Natural Language Understanding, or NLU, and is used to predict the user's intent by recognizing syntax, context, language patterns, and more. After that, the natural language audio signal is transformed into digital data that's compared with a database. The dialogue manager decides what to say to the user or what action to take. The assistant can then respond to the user with text-to-speech technology. Interesting. Is it difficult to set up? Yes, it can be. Pre-trained models exist, but depending on what commands and features you're implementing into your financial assistance app, it may require further training and deeper expertise for the AI algorithm. However, when completed, a properly trained conversational engine makes a financial app easy to get along with for users and increases user engagement. That's nice. One thing I thought of just now was keeping track of receipts. How can personal finance assistance applications help with these? Receipt recognition is a popular application of AI technologies in this sector. If you want to develop a personal finance assistance app, like Expensify, you'll need a recipient recognition feature that will allow you to scan receipts and automatically enter expenses into the app. Expensify provides the Smart Scan feature based on Optical Character Recognition Technology, OCR, that enables the data entry process and translates scanned images into text. It reads the merchant, date and amount of the transaction, 
creates an expense, and enters this data into the expense report. Oh, well, that doesn't sound too bad. I'm guessing, though, that it's easier said than done. You're definitely right about that. This is a bit more complicated. To provide recognition of the receipt, the system extracts the text from the photo of your receipt and analyzes it to determine which data corresponds to the categories embedded in the system, such as date, amount, currency, and the like. After that, the module analyzes existing spending categories and looks for suitable ones in order to add information from a new receipt. The main challenge of implementing this feature is that receipts can be represented in different formats, which complicates the analysis of information and its further distribution. This is where you need effective machine learning models. AI will help you avoid errors in the process of data conversion and process different types of documents with advanced algorithms. Also, a common solution is to implement a built-in system that allows users to manually correct the OCR output data to get a more accurate result. That does sound complicated. A solution like that doesn't sound easy, but useful for users. Definitely. One big topic I wanted to get to with AI personal finance assistant applications is the benefit users can receive when connecting the app to bank accounts. If users link their bank account to the app, then they can get valuable insights about their expenses and their incomes automatically without the need for manual data entry. How does that work? The integration of the application with the bank takes place using Application Programming Interfaces, APIs. This is a software that enables data transmission between the two parties. The concept of open banking, which is gaining momentum around the world, makes it a fairly easy process. This model allows traditional financial institutions and fintech startups to cooperate based on open APIs provided by banks. Open Banking APIs solutions allow the application to integrate with bank accounts, and customize the flow of necessary data for efficient use in financial planning. This approach has replaced screen scraping, where users provide their bank account login ID and password to third parties without the bank's knowledge, putting their accounts at risk. Ah, uh, I see. That would be a bit dangerous if users were to do that. How prevalent are these open banking APIs? Open banking APIs aren't adopted everywhere in the world yet. The European Union, Australia, and the UK each have similar open banking solutions. To be more specific, the EU's Europe Payment Services Directive 2 obligated every licensed bank in the EU to provide an open banking API to third-party developers and financial technology firms. The USA doesn't yet have legislation governing open banking, although some banks are initiating the development of their own open APIs, realizing the benefits and security of this approach. BBVA, Citibank, and Capital One are among them. Interesting. So how do these open banking APIs work? Well, for third-party applications to access open banking data, they need to get an API key for identification. This allows for access permissions to be set. API documentation needs to be followed in order for the application to connect as well. When using your application, users must confirm access to their bank account using functionality provided by the developers. First, the user gives an app permission to access their data and act on their behalf by pressing the I agree button in the app. After that, the application generates a token representing this consent, which is time limited and contains access rights requirements. Once this is done, the app authenticates with the bank and sends the user's token. After that, the user receives a request from his bank to authorize the token and does so. The bank then grants the application access to the user's data. That's really cool. What if we want the application to connect to multiple banks? That can increase development time and complicate the process, since custom solutions might need to be built for each bank. However, an alternative would be to use ready-made open banking platforms that provide a single standardized infrastructure for integration. Plaid is one platform that does this. It's used with a number of financial technology businesses in North America and Europe. For example, Truebill, Expensify, and Clio use the Plaid service to connect with financial institutions. Nordigen and TrueLayer are Plaid alternatives for Europe. Wow, that's neat. Besides features, what other things do we need to watch out for when building an application like this? The technical side of creating an AI financial assistant is closely related to other aspects of bringing the application to the market. One of the most important things to watch for are regulations. For example, 
the United States, which is the leader in the number of fintech startups in the world, still doesn't have a single framework for managing the fintech sector. Therefore, when developing applications for this market, you need to study the local regulations of a particular state, also taking into account the federal legislation covering financial services, such as anti-money laundering regulations, Graham-Leach-Bliley Act, etc. In Europe, your application must be compliant with the General Data Protection Regulation, or GDPR, ensuring users' consent to access their data, and KYC AML, which ensures preventing money fraud and terrorist financing. PSD2, which obliges banks to provide open APIs for third-party access, also imposes other requirements on financial service providers. If your application is associated with any type of payment service in the European Union, it must comply with certain requirements. For example, the use of multi-factor authentication for user login. Well, I heard that the EU Artificial Intelligence Act was proposed at the end of 2021. What do you think that means for us when planning an AI-powered financial assistance app? The AI Act aims to establish a set of rules for AI-powered products on the EU market. In particular, the law contains a product safety framework built around a set of four risk categories. It establishes requirements for entering the market and certifying high-risk AI systems, which include solutions like product security components, credit scoring, evidence reliability assessment, and others that may be considered a clear security threat or violation of human rights. The regulation has not yet entered into use, but it should also be taken into account when developing an AI-based software thinking of the future. We highly recommend that you study the regulatory environment of the region for which you are creating a financial app in order to comply with all requirements and implement the appropriate features in your product. I agree with that. Maintaining compliance with regulations not only keeps your business from getting in trouble with the law, but it also enhances your reputability in the market and increases user trust. So now that we've discussed all the potential features and implementation of AI personal finance assistant applications, I think it's clear that this space is a bit more complicated than it might sound at first. Definitely. Making an AI-powered personal finance app isn't a walk in the park at all. Creating efficient algorithms and working with advanced technologies cannot be learned in theory. It requires practice and constant knowledge updating. You need to look for a reliable development team that will turn a financial application into an intelligent, indispensable assistant for your customers. If you're ready to collaborate with an experienced artificial intelligence software development team, our engineers here at MobyDev are an excellent choice. We're here to help you realize your vision to bring innovative features to your users. If you're ready to take that next step to achieve your goals, reach out to us today by sending an email to contact at mobydev.biz so that we can have a conversation about your objectives. All right, that's all we have for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like this episode and found it helpful, please be sure to share it with a friend or colleague. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Take care.